Welcome to the Alaska Land Podcast, stories from the Fairbanks, North Star Borough's past, present, and future, with your host, Mayor Bryce Ward. Each episode, we'll sit down with Fairbanks' most interesting characters for a fascinating conversation about where we've been and where we're going. And now, Mayor Ward. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, we're here for the Alaska Land Podcast, and it's uh, me, Mayor Bryce Ward. We're talking past, present, and future of the Fairbanks North Star Borough, and today we have a very special guest. We have uh, Ms. Julie Anderson, who's here to talk about the Moose Creek Dam uh, and the kind of associated levees and all the goodness that comes with that and talk about the history and, and what exactly is going on today. It's, it's a big project, and, uh, and there's a lot going on. So, Julie, maybe if you'd introduce yourself for uh, our listeners and talk a little bit about who you are. And Sure. Thanks, Mayor Ward. So I'm Julie Anderson. I manage the Chino Flood Control Project. Um, I'm a local. I grew up, well, was born in, out in Fairbanks, grew up in Salcha, um, graduated from UAF with a civil engineering degree, um, been out of state and in Anchorage in the last five years. I've been back here and on site at the Chino Project. <laughs> That's great. So you're you're a you're a Fairbanks kid. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I am. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so uh, you you work for the Corps and you're working on the project now. Um, you know, folks might not be familiar with what the Moose Creek Dam is and 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 exactly where it's located. Maybe can you talk a little bit about like its geographic significance to the borough and and what exactly it does? Well, sure. And may I might even just kind of drop back and talk about a little bit of history. Um, so the Moose Creek Dam regulates the Chena River, which of course runs through Fairbanks. It doesn't regulate the Tanana. Um, Fairbanks has been flooding um, because of a slew from the Tanana and also from the Chena River since about the 1900s. Like in the core um, photo archives, we've got pictures from like 1905, I think 1920s, definitely a big flood in 1948 um, that just kind of document these. And so I don't think a lot of people realize that there was what was called Chena Slough, and it came as an arm that came off the Tanana River came into the Chena River um, downstream of where Little Chena is. And so you'd get a whole bunch of water in the Chena Basin, and then you'd get this Tanana was high too, usually, um, and that would help flood Fairbanks. So the initial work that was done kind of after the 1948 flood was try to cut off Chena Slough, and that was called Moose Creek Dyke. Um, and that um, is was actually part, the Richardson Highway was put on top of it. It's um, at Moose Creek Bluff, which I think kind of people know that landmark, and kind of went um, three miles towards the Tanana. And it it worked, it, it helped, but it didn't completely solve the problem. Um, and then after the 1967 flood, that was kind of the enough is enough. Um, we need to... Um, you know, strengthen the protection of Fairbanks and make sure that we have something that, that really protects Fair, Fairbanks because clearly Fairbanks got, you know, six feet of water in it, quite a few damages. <laughs> so Pile Driver Slough was initially part, that's the branch that comes off of the Tanana, uh, was a silt-laden slough. Actually, the, ta- the, the Chena right out front of the borough building here used to be silt-laden before um, that project went in. And that was put in in 48, you said? Um, well, I think... 48 was a flood, so early 50s. Early yeah. 50s, okay. Yeah. And that was that was the first piece of it, cutting right. that off. Yep. Um, and obviously it didn't solve the problem when water came in from the China. Right, it didn't do that. And it's also um, because we're all in all these sands and gravels, it still let passed a lot of water through it. Like, you know, it's, it was a partial solution, but it didn't completely solve the problem. Yeah. So the 67 flood was really the, the thing that, folks said, okay, this is enough's enough. Right. Um, And and so what happened at that point? So then the Corps started some feasibility studies, and the initial plan was actually to have a pool probably 15 miles upstream um, of kind of Eielson Air Force Base and actually have a dam that held water um, year-round, if you will. Um, And then I think as more feasibility went through and looking at options, they realized that we don't flood every year um, so they could look at a dry dam. So that's what they ended up building as the Chena River Flood Control Project is a dry dam. So most of the time our gates are open, the Chena River's, you know, meandering through it as it would. Um, When we have a significant precipitation event, then we're dropping the gates and we're diverting the water over to the Tanana River. The Tanana River is, 
you know, has capacity is 10 times or more that of the Chena River. So if we can get it over there, we can get it around Fairbanks. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and so that's the primary purpose of the, the dam right now is to monitor the flow. I know we've had a few conversations in the office here. Typically, it's in August, right, when we get right. lots of precipitation yep. in the kind of the Chena Rec area right. or here in Fairbanks. Um, what are those flow? Do you have the flow volumes of what typically runs through and what, what it's uh, capable of handling? Sure. So the project is authorized for 12,000 CFS in downtown Fairbanks. And over in Grail Park, there's a gauge that's run by USGS, which is, you know, what we operate, which is the standard. In reality, um, we're running in downtown Fairbanks between like 10,500 and 11,500 CFS because as in every community, not just this one, there's encroachment. And so um, we're trying to, you know, get the water moving, but I'm um, trying to, you know, minimize how much, you know, water there is in people's yards and all the, you know, the problems that come, come with that as well. So that means up at the dam, we just put our gates in about 7,600 CFS, and we might um, allow water, depending on what's happening on the Little Chena River, how much precipitation we're getting in the basin up to like 82 or 8300 CFS. So we have another USGS gauge. It's three miles downstream of our dam, and that's what we use to make our gate settings for for the dam to monitor that. Gotcha. Yeah. So you're looking at stuff downstream from the jam, the dam, kind of in the North Pole area, right. kind of Nordale Road-ish. Right. Um, and then, yep. but really the dam, the the thing that controls the the gates, if you will, is the the volume of water that's moving in downtown Fairbanks. Right. That's what we're operating to. And that's where our right, we're trying not to exceed our operating objective. So the other component of that is the Little Chena River. And the Little Chena River, um, it can flood Fairbanks on its own. I know it looks like a really small <laughs> little thing. Um, if we, I've seen it like at 2000 CFS, but its maximum flow, if it had maximum precipitation in its little basin, it could get to 20,000 CFS. Oh my goodness. So that's one of the points we want to make is even though we've got this great big dam here, Little China could flood Fairbanks on its own if it started acting up. Probably wouldn't be long duration, wouldn't be as you know big as a 67 flood, but yeah. <laughs> goodness. You know, I, I think there was a couple of years ago, we had some pretty high volumes coming through the Little China. There was... Um, mm-hmm some precipitation kind of north, um, north of the Chena Rec area where most yeah. of that basin is. And, uh, we, I don't, most folks, you know, I grew up in Fairbanks too. I, I don't remember seeing the little Chena that high. Right. <laughs> yeah. <ever. laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, and it's, so in addition to those gauges, like below the dam, then we have two gauges. On, well, USGS has two gauges for us on the river upstream of the dam, one at Hunts Creek and Hunts Creek and one um, closer to two rivers. And then there's also um, Natural Resource Conservation Service has precipitation gauges um, on some of the um, ridges, you know, in the basin as well. So we're fairly well instrumented in terms of being able to, mo- you know, monitor what's coming at us. So when you see precipitation happening um, upstream, how much time do you have to prepare for that at the dam uh, when you when you see kind of a big movement coming through? Well, um, probably a couple days and and usually longer. Um, we're fortunate to have the support of NOAA um, Weather Service here in Fairbanks and then River Forecast Center in Anchorage, and those folks both they alert us when they see precipitation events coming through they also have modelers to say this is what we think you might be seeing and so we're using a lot of that data to say okay maybe we just you know need to get on watch and make sure we're ready just because we um, try and do that well ahead of when we're actually going to put you know gates in water yeah gotcha so the, the Moose Creek Dam itself was um, it looks like if, if I can understand the levee uh, which predated the dam was built back in the 50s and then 60s the Corps said okay we've got to upgrade this Um, and is that when it grew in size I mean obviously right now if you've been out it's it's pretty tall it's a pretty big structure sure so that's almost 50 feet tall where the control works is because that's like the you know the valley the lowest point in the valley right and then as you move towards the Tanana River you're actually getting to a higher elevation which is very counterintuitive so you kind of have a bathtub between the Chena River and the Tanana and once you fill that bathtub then the water starts spilling into the Tanana so the entire structure is eight and a half miles long and it's from a bluff 
to the Tanana River. Um, at, when you get close to the Tanana River, we're probably like 20 feet high. And then the crest is nominally 24 feet. There's um, places that are, you know, larger than that. But, yeah. Um, it's all built on 600 feet of sands and gravels. So we still have the problem that the dike had is that you get a water that's flowing through it. And so we have um, different features like the relief wells, which if we do, it takes the groundwater that's going through it and it filters it um, and brings it to the surface. So that the idea of filtering it is you leave those sands and small particles in place so your structure stays in place, but you're relieving the pressure of the water behind the dam. So we have like 150 relief wells that, that go into this structure. So it's a little... Um, it's a little different than most dams. <laughs> yeah, you know, from what I understand, most dams that the Corps runs and operates um, aren't built on giant river bodies right, like this. Right. <laughs> so um, it definitely creates a unique situation. Mm -hmm. And um, the the relief wells in, in particular, one that I, you know, folks might have seen them if you're driving out to the lakes or yeah. to the lake park or the river park. Um, you may see these like snorkely looking pipes right, on the side right. of the road yeah the rusty pipes the big rusty pipes <laughs> yeah um, and, and so those are the relief wells and and those relieve water pressure um when there's when water there's being pool. impounded behind the dam right, right? okay right yep and um they're all um it's just by pressure so there's no pumps in them there's no electricity to it it's just you know hydrostatic yeah mm -hmm. so one of the dangers of an earth dam especially mm -hmm. in this type of um River Valley yeah. is uh, is what they call sand boils, right? It's right. where you get water that moves in from the impounding side of the dam downstream, mm -hmm. and and it can erode back and damage the structure of of the facility. Right. Um, and, and from my understanding, that's what happened with New Orleans, right? Is they had uh, an issue with dam with the failure uh, because of that. Yeah, there was one of several reasons for the um, problems in New Orleans. Um, Katrina was kind of the defining event for the Corps that said, that told the Corps kind of managers of dams were then instructed, go look at the safety of your dams and reevaluate it. Um, so Moose Creek Dam was part of that. Um, and we were ranked um, high enough, the concerns because that the boils and the seepage that they decided that, yeah, they needed to do a re rehabilitation project on the dam. So that's going on out there right now. So we have a big construction zone out there. <laughs> um, and so for about four and a half miles of the dam, um, they're putting a low strength concrete wall through the center and about 10 feet below the foundation um, to essentially slow down that water. Or if there was a... Um, seepage and erosion of material uh, underneath the dam essentially it, it would meet you know meet that concrete wall and stop so we call it the barrier wall um, so that went through like i think eight years of feasibility study and the contract was awarded this they're in their second um, construction season so about two years ago um, and they're using um, augers so they're using um, and essentially pumping concrete in um, you know, making so it's kind of like a cast in place piles, and then they overlap each other by about a foot to make the wall. And so those piles are 55 to 65 foot deep. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So they're going from the top of the structure through the core into mm -hmm. the groundwater right. table to create a, a barrier wall right. uh, down the center. One of the things we found when we were drilling for that project is that we found wood, we found small um, silts and sands, those kind of things that are highly erodible that just kind of verified that, yeah, we need to put this barrier wall in because these things that are easily erodible um, that can then fail your dam are in our foundation. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So that was discovered in your feasibility? Right. It's part of our feasibility process. Oh, yeah, fascinating. That we, it was but, you know, the literature search kind of said it was there. We were drilling holes every thousand feet. So it was kind of like, well, is this the needle in the haystack? And no, it's not. It's there. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Okay. When So when they, I'm, I'm curious uh, to know when they put the dam in, did they build it over top of the uh, the dike that was there before? Or did they build it in a new location? So there's a different alignment. Um, the old alignment is um, probably... A, it's like past where the floodway is now. It's more aligned with the bluff that's on the Richardson Highway. And, oh, okay. Um, so where the dam is now is um, 
well, I mean, on the Richardson Highway, it's like maybe half mile, a mile, you know, kind of upstream of that. And this one connects kind of a, you know, a, a further bluff to the Tanana. So again, the Moose Creek Dike was maybe like three miles long. This one's like eight and a half miles long. Yeah. Okay. And then another feature of that project is probably more people familiar with is then the Tanana Levee. And then the levee connects the dam all the way to south of the airport, adding the protection of the Tanana River as well from Fairbanks. Right. So it's yeah. it's a complete system right. that was put in place. And the Corps manages the dam itself, which goes from the the Chena Bluff area right. out to the Tanana. And then um, the borough actually manages um, or maintains, if you will, from the Tanana kind of conjuncture there in North Pole down to the Chena. Right, uh, yeah. Where it turns into the Tanana. Right, yeah. We're all <laughs> like, confluence, is that what it's confluence, called? Confluence, there yeah. we go, yeah, yeah. Get all my nautical terms correctly. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the first mile of it is the cores, and then after that, the rest of it's turned over, was turned over to the borough. So we do a joint inspection with um, your you folks usually in August or September each year on the levy. Um, it's just part of the research certification process to make sure that it meets standards of the core. We have um, inspectors um, from our Anchorage engineering office come up and do an annual inspection for us and, um, you know, give us maintenance tips and things to make sure we're um, keeping it in good shape too. Yeah. So that's, I know one of the big things with the dam itself and then the levee too mm-hmm. is, you know, ATVs and vehicles driving <laughs> on it, right? Right. And uh, I mean, there's a, there's a <laughs> reason why that's not, a good sure. option because it yeah, let me just talk a little bit yeah. about that in the structure itself so it, so it erodes see these sands and gravels erode and so when you start unfortunately you end up rutting when you put the AT, you know, the ATVs on them and then you get a nice heavy rainstorm and then that ruts it and erodes anymore and pretty soon you don't have a structure there anymore it's just eroded out and then you don't have the protection you have that you want so we're um we were the dam itself were non-motorized until you know freeze up to the first of November, um, and then you're welcome to come out with your ATVs and your snow machines, and it's a wonderful place to play. And then the first of April, usually the snow is melting by then, usually, <laughs> and then we're back to non-motorized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and we really, you know, the floodway is a wonderful place to go. We make um, places through the ramps to give you guys to give you know access so we ask people to stay off the dam embankment even in the winter time with the snow machine and just use the marked access routes yeah, yeah and there's there's great parking on both sides right we've got right. the kind of recreational side where mm-hmm. we've got tan our china lakes you've yeah. got the river park and then on the other side of the dam itself there's actually parking for um, some of these um, outdoor activities that you right. can do uh, in the winter yep there's some there and we're developing some more down by um, moose creek bluff as well so yeah to get people more access so that's great sure yeah. that's awesome so um, I'm curious to know, and I don't know the, the history on the dike itself. Was it constructed at the same time, the Tanana Dike, as the Moose Creek Dam? So you're talking about the Tanana Le- the levee to Fairbanks? Yeah. So the, they um, it was completed a little bit after. It, was, it didn't get finished, I think, until the mid-'80s. Yeah. Um, so I think the dam was done first, and then because— I think oh, it must have been five or six contracts to do all those projects. I think they were like probably upwards of like over 150, 200 million at the time, and that was in the mid 70s. Yeah, you know? it was it was a mega project. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. what it was put in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the other kind of cool f- fact about the Chino project is it's more than paid for itself. We um, look at damages prevented in terms of keeping water out of the first floor elevations of buildings. We figured uh, we've done 30 operations to date. So about every three years we operate. Um, we were we came online in 1979, but we didn't get a precipitation vent until 1981. So that was like the test bill. We actually put water behind the structure. Um, so we prevented $420 million of damages to date. Um, and that's hopefully a you know sizable chunk of money for our community. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know. And, you know, I mean, it, it, we're talking real infrastructure for the community that's been protected by that. Mm-hmm. And because of that investment that was made mm-hmm. by Congress. Right. <laughs> back when, uh, you know, unfortunately, after we went through several floods, yeah. major floods uh, yeah. here in Fairbanks. Yeah. 
So, you know, I know we get a little bit of discussion about uh, groundwater, uh, mm-hmm. and we talked a little bit about when the dam impounds water behind it, which mm-hmm. has happened a number of times. Right. Um, and, and this kind of the positive pressure, mm-hmm. groundwater pressure that causes groundwater to rise. Right. I know we often hear a lot at the borough about folks that maybe get frustrated um, mm-hmm. with some of, we have a groundwater protection overlay in the North Pole area. It's a zoning overlay. Um, which prevents basements and you know, structures from being placed into the ground. Right. Um, but maybe talk a little bit about um, the hydrology of what happens with groundwater when in a you know alluvial plain mm-hmm. you're putting, you're trying to dam up water behind it. <laughs> right. uh, it. It does weird things to the ground, right? Sure. And I mean, unfortunately, we just have high groundwater to begin with, right? Our water, you know, seven feet, nine feet, sometimes it's five feet then you get a whole bunch of precipitation, so your water table is going to come up. And then when we dam water behind it, we're, make, we're, we're putting pressure on that, on that water, so it's, it's like pressurizing it, um, so it's making it go up. And so when we have water behind, in our floodway, then the folks that are parallel to the dam next to that floodway are going to see that, you know, water in their basements, in their septic tanks, those kinds of things. And we realize that, you know, it can take a month or so to go down. I mean, these are kind of slow-moving events. And people on the Chena River get the same thing, too. When, um, you know, when we got high water, even when we're impounding water, and then we're going to release all that water. Um, But uh, hopefully these small events... Um, are much better than having these big events and having six feet of water and, and you know, having water up to our, our rooftop. So it, it's certainly a, a trade-off. I guess it was one that was made a long time ago. Um, and, and yeah, when you have 600 feet of sands and gravels, that's, that's just, you know, the geology is the way it is here. We can't change that. <laughs> nope, can't change it. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why we have that zoning overlay is, mm-hmm. you know, there's things that we know, mm-hmm. um, you know, hazards, if you will, that we mm-hmm. want to make sure folks are aware of when they're out building in the area. So, sure. yeah. um, you know, it's, it's good information to have. It means that you're well equipped to make good decisions. <laughs> right. And because we don't operate every year and this doesn't happen to you every year, you know, we kind of use that, that, that knowledge, you know, just like, there aren't that many people left that were here in the 67 flood anymore. And so we kind of, you know, you lose that, that knowledge of why these things are important. <laughs> yep. Definitely. Yeah. So, you know, I think there's a great partnership that the Corps and the borough have uh, engaged mm-hmm. in over the years. Um, Moose Creek Dam, the facility itself, is, mm-hmm. is a core project, but mm-hmm. um, we operate, the Fairbanks North Star Borough operates through a, a lease with the Corps, the mm-hmm. Chena Lake yeah. uh, rec area. Um, and I think... Any Fairbanks and that's been here for any amount of time has spent probably significant time <laughs> <laughs> out at the Chena Lake uh, project or the mm. the river park, um, and it's just such an awesome thing. I, I guess I'd encourage anyone that hasn't spent time out mm. there uh, to spend time out there. And, and the core has a beautiful facility too. Maybe do you, you want to talk a little bit about that? The well, yeah, but first I just like to say you guys are just wonderful par- partners at the lake area and the river park. You guys keep it so clean and, and organized, and it's just, um, you know, people compliment us, and we're like, no, it's the borough doing the awesome job out there. <laughs> They're doing the heavy lifting, and we sure appreciate that. Um, and then, yeah, in 2011, um, we got funding to expand our visitor center, and so we have some, you know, some hand-on exhibits out there. We've got a model of the project and some photos of the past floods and things like that. So if you're in the area, and um, you know, it's always you're welcome to come out and take a walk through there as well. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I would encourage if you have, you know, a church group, a scout group, mm-hmm. you know, a, a class. It's just mm-hmm. such an awesome experience. And, and your park rangers do such a great job of kind of explaining mm-hmm. the purpose of the facility. Um, and and I will say the visitor center is absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, it is so wonderful out there. You guys did such a great job with that. Yeah. And we're also um, be willing to give groups tours of the dam too. So you can always get a hold of us and love to have out, you out there as well. <laughs> Definitely. Well, you know, I think we're um, coming up to a close here with uh, this really interesting episode about the Moose Creek Dam, about this uh, core project that saves Fairbanks um, every three years. (laughs) Um, Is there anything else you'd like to share with folks? Um, Any ways to, uh, obviously we said, if you want to come out and do a a tour, contact the core. Yeah, sure. No, we just appreciate uh, the partnership with the borough. 
<laughs> All right. Well, thank you for spending the time with us here. And mm-hmm. um, I hope folks found this interesting. And like I said, if you want to know more information mm-hmm. um, and uh, or if you're interested in engineering or, or the, any of the good work that the Corps does for our nation, mm-hmm. um, contact them. So thanks, Julie. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mayor Ward. Mm-hmm. Fairbanks, oh, Fairbanks. Thanks for listening to the Alaska Land Podcast. We hope you found today's conversation enlightening. For more episodes, listen on your mobile device through your favorite podcast app or watch at youtube.com slash Fairbanks North Star Borough. The Adventure Show.